Hello everyone, how are you guys tonight? You guys, it is Thursday night. You guys have almost made it through another work week. Congratulations. Um, you guys are live here on the Dixie Bell Paint Facebook and Instagram page. My name is Brandy. I am the owner and artisan behind Brushed by Brandy. And I'm a Dixie Bell Paint brand ambassador. We paint live every week with you guys um, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern. So it is Thursday, you guys are live right here. Um, my husband Sean is here, you guys, so as we paint tonight, feel free to pop on and ask us any questions you might have. Come on and let us know you're, where you're watching from. I love to hear from you guys. I do go back and watch all these and I read all the comments, even though I can't respond to all of them. I make sure I get all the questions and I do read everything, so I love seeing you guys on with us um, on Thursdays. So this week we are going to do kind of a farmhouse finish. And let me tell you guys where I'm going with it first. You're going to a farmhouse? I'm going, we're going to a farmhouse. We're just going to take these. If I dump them off at a farmhouse somewhere and I leave them for like a week, I'm hoping they'll just get really dirty. and then, Done. You know, huh? done. Right? Don't worry. I'll get a video for you guys. Um, no, these are what I'm starting with. These are these shutter door cabinets. And I thought they were super cute. So I picked these up at an estate sale. And um, actually the... It was the father that passed away, but the son was there, and he said, I have had these I had these in my room all growing up, and I thought that was kind of cool. So I'm doing these for a customer that I've done pieces for before, and so we're going to kind of tie in the colors that she's got on her other piece, um, but we're going to do a different finish on it. So uh, the shutter doors here say farmhouse style to me. They say, you know, a southern country porch um, that's a little bit weathered, a little bit chippy you know um so that's kind of what we're going for so let me tell you guys what colors i'm going to be using here so what you're going to see me do tonight is we're going to put our base down um and it's going to go underneath dixie bell crackle okay so what happens with crackle is the layer that you put underneath is going to peek through another color so what i put on tonight you're actually barely going to see it um, but it's going to be my colors that peek through underneath my crackle is what we're going to put on tonight. Um, and the colors that I want to peek through are going to be some yellows and some blues. So let me show you which I, which I chose. And that's because the piece that I did for her before has yellows and blues in it. So I think this would be cute if those are my colors peeking through underneath my crackle. Um, so I've got Dixie Belle Lemonade, which is a really pale yellow. Why is this container so messed up? Huh? I don't know. Anyway, this is lemonade. I would agree with Fireball June. These just remind me of like a plantation cheddar. Yes, exactly. That's what I mean. But it's kind of country, kind of, you know, farmhouse feeling. A little bit country, a little bit rock and yeah, roll. Yeah, like they would have been outside in the weather and worn. So that's what we're going to go for. So I got lemonade. Um, and the next shade darker than lemonade is rebel yellow. So those are my See? yellows. Those are barely any different. Uh, in the container. Once they're on, the, you'll notice a difference. And then I've got um, Dusty Blue and um, Stormy Seas. Llewellyn so, says hi. Hi, Llewellyn. How are you? Um, what was I just looking at from you? Oh, Llewellyn, I was looking at your flashback today of your early picture of your booth. I thought that was pretty cool to see that. Um, and then I'm going to actually throw in a little bit of the gulf. And let me tell you why I'm going to add in the gulf. Because... I'm going to throw a paper on. Now, inside of doors, I like to use paper. I know, it's shocking. I like to use papers for a fun little surprise when you open doors. So my plan is, I um, and I actually like that this has this kind of slatted feel, but I want to put this decoupage paper in here because it's got the yellows and the blues, but look at how well the gulf ties in with the teal color that's in this paper. So I think if this is peeking through under my crackle and I've got the paper on the inside, um, that's going to be perfect. It's got the, it's got my yellow and blue colors in it. Now, um, I'm going to put the yellows and blues on, but like I said, it's going to be my layer underneath my crackle. I'm going to put, I, I think I'm going to put drop cloth over top. So they're going to be white when I'm done. And these colors are just going to peek through underneath my um, Dixville drop cloth. So that tells you where I'm going. Where am I now? Where you been? Where am I now? Okay, so far what I've done on these is I cleaned them really well with Dixie Belle White Lightning, took all my hardware off, cleaned them with White Lightning. They were bleeders. Okay, let me show you how I knew that they were bleeding. You want to get my Home Depot bucket over there? Not really. We're going to dig through the trash. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's what we do, right? That's how we get this furniture in the first A little first dumpster place. dive? We're going to dumpster dive in my trash, which is a Home Depot bucket. But oh, let me yeah. show you. Um, this is how I knew that it was a bleeder. <gasps> 
how gross is that? It looks filthy, you guys, but if your rags are looking like this, your piece is bleeding. This is, this is bleed through. So, um, it, they weren't that dirty. They weren't that dirty. I saw the house they came from. It wasn't like this. So, and it, and it was rag after rag after rag after rag. It was, it was just a bleeder. Okay. So I think you just blew your nose in the rag. Uh, I'm having a hard time even touching it. It's freaking <laughs> me out a little bit. Okay. So if your rags are looking like this, you guys, you need to use Dixie Bell Boss. This is your, this is one of your first clues right there. All right. So I knew that I needed Boss. So I have Dixie Bell Boss in gray on here. And I told you guys, I've told you guys before, if I, if I can choose what color Boss I want, um, I always choose gray. I just love the coverage of it. I love how the gray goes on. Um, gray is my first choice. And so since I'm going to cover all this up with a bunch of different colors and crackle and everything, I could choose what color I wanted underneath. Um, I chose the gray. So that's where I am right now. So let's go ahead and start throwing some of our colors on. Actually, you know what? Let's do the tops first. What? I know. Sorry. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so that's where I'm going on the bodies. But let's talk about the tops of these. Um, the tops I want to stain. So she sent me a picture of what her wood floors look like in the room and they're kind of a walnut color. So I'm going to stain the tops and we're going to do that with you tonight. Let me show you what I'm going to stain them with. Okay, so I'm going to use, um, last week we used Dixie Bell Voodoo Gel Stain, which is their water-based gel stain. This week we're going to use No Pain Gel Stain, which is the oil-based gel stain. So you'll be able, if you watched last week, you can see how differently that went on. And now I'm going to show you how the um, no pain gel stain goes on. So I'm going to put this on the top. I'm going to use no pain gel stain in walnut. And what I've done to the tops so far is I sanded them down, got, got through that old clear coat. Um, and I used an 80 grit, then 120, then 220. That's always my 80, 120, 220. That's my repertoire for sanding the tops down. Um... So 80, 120, 220, and then they've, they've got a pre-stained conditioner on them. So pre-stained conditioner, I always try to use on my wood stain tops. And what pre-stained conditioner does is it's going to even out the wood so that it absorbs the stain more evenly. Um, it's not going to hide flaws in your top if you've got burn marks and, I don't know, uh, crazy... Can I, can I ask you a question? No. Only because <laughs> only I like Wait, the last no, name. I said no. Nikki has a question. Uh, if you use two coats of silk, can you avoid using boss? Yeah, yeah, you can. So um, if I would have been choosing silk on these, I, I could have avoided the boss. So one coat of silk, silk is a uh, has a built-in stain blocker, and one coat of silk is about equivalent to putting on one coat of boss. So two coats of boss are always recommended. You usually need two coats of paint. So if you're using silk, you, you get about two coats of stain blocker in there. There are some that are super stubborn and will even go through two coats of boss, will go through two coats of silk the same. So on those really stubborn ones, you either need to add more coats of your paint or your boss. Um, th this is not one of those. This is just, it's just a regular bleeder. But I mean, if you've got rich old mahogany, you, you can need more than the two coats even sometimes. But that coat of silk is about equivalent to your one coat of boss. Okay, so let's go ahead and put on some no paint gel stain on the top. Um, so I like to apply stain with an old sock. Uh, throw me your sock. Take your sock off. All right, we're gonna we're gonna use Sean's sock tonight. Okay. So uh, old socks in our house. I don't know what happened to the sock. The feet get warm. <laughs> yeah, it's summer. Burn it's holes. Summertime in California. It needed some aeration. When socks die in our house, this is where they come to be stain rags. Without being washed. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Shutter. Um, I recommend if you're going to use old socks that they be cotton. Don't use the ones that are like microfiber because the little fibers get stuck in your wood. Anyway. Oh, you won't find those in my drawer. Yeah, no. Only cotton socks. Number one, because that's all I'll buy in the first place. Okay, so you want to come up here and hang out with me and look at this top. Not really. Hurry up. Come look at my top. <laughs> I, I do want I do want to apologize to everyone who's watching tonight. Um, it's officially summer. It's warm here now. And we've traded from overalls to cut off overalls. And these legs have not seen the light of day in a year now. So my apologies from here on out through the summer, we're going to be rocking some cut off overalls and really white legs. 
Me too. <laughs> yeah, so you can't see Sean's legs. All right, so this is a brand, uh, you know what? Actually, I think I have a little bit left in this old can. Oh, no, no, yeah, let's get over here to follow you and then, you know. Okay, just, this is uh, like a, there's like a tiny bit left in this can. I'm gonna try to use the rest of it, but I might need to open that brand new one. Um, yeah, there's barely anything in here, but we're gonna scrape the bottom of the barrel because this stuff is like gold and do not throw it away. Easy. I need a stir stick. Um, all right. Stir sticks. I mean, I have an extra hand. Do you, you know. uh, if you guys pick up transfers, these sticks that come with your transfers, I save these. They are great stir sticks. And I'm just going to stir this up. You want to make sure that you stir your no paint gel stain. It's a thicker formula than the Voodoo. So what the difference is, is Voodoo gel stain is Dixie Bell's water-based gel stain. This is the oil-based gel stain. It's much thicker and it gets much more opaque coverage. I'm just cutting you out of the picture. So. Yeah, no, that's fine. Nobody wants to see the white legs. Just yeah. trust me on it. Um, when you seal your can, you want to make sure that your can is nice and sealed. This stuff can dry out in the can and it happens quicker than you think it will. So make sure when you seal your cans up that you're um, hitting that lid down with a hammer even putting some saran wrap over and then putting your top on. Um, some people even put the, uh, they put the lid on and then we'll store it upside down to seal the lid. So that's another idea too, but you want to make sure that you seal up your no paint gel stains really well. All right. So like I said, this has been sanded. It has a coat of pre-stain conditioner on it so that my stain takes nice and evenly. Um, these are uh, these are oak, but they're not super high quality. There's a lot of grain in it. It's not overly gorgeous grain, but they're pretty. You know, it's a solid wood top. So I'm going to take my old sock and I'm going to dip it in my gel stain, and I get I get quite a bit to start. Oh, Karina, you just wait. She says I thought this was a reality show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Reality's going to slap yeah. you here in a minute. Just I'm, sit tight. I'm going to move these apart because I don't want to get it on that other. Piece just yet I'm going to do that one on a separate video all right and then I want this to be fairly thin coverage I really want the wood to show through I just want to add a little bit of color to it um, this is just my boss I'm still going to paint over it so I'm not being overly careful to try to not get it on the front I try not to paint over my boss okay so um, <laughs> I know you I know your <laughs> boss Sean's boss used to be my boss at work because I used to do what he does now and uh, uh, she doesn't watch my videos does she no, I don't know no comment yeah <laughs> probably not okay so uh, no pain gel stain you can build up for thicker coverage I want really thin coverage on this but you can get fully opaque coverage with no pain gel stain so I love this. If you've got damage in a top, you can still get a wood stained look and just build this up for really opaque coverage. Sheila, nobody knows what I do. I don't even know what I do. <laughs> John works for a bank, you guys. Um, so you can build this up. Usually about three coats of no paint gel stain will get you fully opaque coverage if you're putting it on and you don't wipe it back as much as I'm wiping this back. I'm wiping this back quite a bit because I really just want that. I, I just want a little tint of color on here. And that's just based on the color of the floors that my customer sent me. A photo of her floors in the room were, were you know, darker than natural wood. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm a professional brush washer. <laughs> it's been a while for that, though. I don't know. I really, yeah. I really think you could use some more training on that. Then, oh yeah. If you're gonna claim that as I a guarantee. profession, I mean, I wouldn't put it on your resume or anything. Oh no, I didn't make it there. <laughs> okay, so I feel like that's. I try to get it nice and even. And what about odors? Uh, uh, if you have odors on the inside of your piece, boss will stop your odors. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about odors from the piece. Um, this is pretty low odor, but it is an oil-based product, so you want to make sure that you're using this in a well-ventilated area. If you're sensitive to odors, this could bother you. It does have an odor similar to most um, oil-based stains that you would buy anywhere. So this, if you are overly sensitive to odors, then the Voodoo Gel Stain is a great alternative for that because the Voodoo doesn't have an odor, 
but oil-based products do and this is an oil-based stain so keep that in mind when you're choosing which one you want so I love this color it's not too dark it just added a little bit of richness can you throw some voodoo on top of paint yeah you can you can use your voodoo over paint you can use your voodoo gel stains like like a glaze you can use them like a glaze you can use them with the wood graining tool over paint to get fake wood looks faux wood looks I guess not fake um, when I'm staining with the no paint gel stain, I also wear gloves. The water-based gel stain, the Voodoo, washes off your hands nice and easily. Um, but the no paint gel stain does not. It will stain your hands. And then I'm going to throw that sock away. Like, use a chip brush or an old sock or something because you don't want to try to rinse out stuff with oil-based products. It's just a pain. I think there's a reason that Sheila doesn't write warning labels. <laughs> as far as the fumes, it's not enough to cause hallucinations or paralyzed brain cells. Oh, yeah, yeah, but it, oh, this is good. Well, I mean, it depends. Was, How long are yeah. you staying out there? Yeah. What are you staining? Is it edible? You, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, if you're going for like a whole room look, then you know, prepare to start seeing some ghosts. I think the lobotomy is taking effect. All right, so you can kind of compare from this top where I added the walnut voodoo gel, or sorry, not voodoo. No paint Sorry, gel the no, stain. Yeah. Um, and then the natural top over here that just has the pre wood or the pre stain conditioner on it, and you can see how that <laughs> changed the color of this oak. So, all right, you guys, let's start adding some paint. All right, now this is going to just be my base underneath my crackle. I think we are going to be able to get some get the crackle on tonight. Um, but crackle takes overnight to really work, so you guys aren't going to actually see the finished look no matter what I do tonight. This is drying out a little bit. I'm really digging the breeze and what it's doing to your hair. Oh, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's just natural. It's like a, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. it's just natural. It flows like yeah, that? Yeah, like, okay. a, like a Disney princess, just, yeah. kind of. Yeah, that's it doesn't even move, and then the camera goes on, and it just automatically yeah. starts moving. Huh, Mine does that, too. This one drawer. I'm just going to check. Nope, it's just the drawer. All right, but I like it on this side a little bit better. So it just um, has a little bit of a gap in there, and I think it's just how the drawer is made because it, you know, it opens really easily. It opens nicely. So if the, let's go back to the no paint gel stain. So yes. if it's going on in, in a couple of spots, it's not going on as well as the others, what do you do? Uh, it means you haven't sanded all the way through your finish. It means there's a barrier there. So... Uh, you probably haven't gone through all of your existing finish. If it's not going on evenly and you need to go back and sand, um, you may have a veneer, so make sure that you sand carefully. Um, just sand slowly, but if there's a barrier there, it's not going to absorb into all the areas the same way. Uh, I didn't get this into all of my grain on the front, so I'm just rubbing it into the wood grain in some spots. Yeah, if it's not taking evenly, another thing to consider is if you have, you've had to patch your wood in any way, like with either Dixie Mud or any kind of a wood filler or even wood glue, um, those things will not take stain the same way as the surrounding wood. So you may need to either just take a little brush and kind, you can kind of add a little more stain in that spot to, you know, faux paint it to make it match. But if you've added other things, they're not going to take the stain the same way as the surrounding area. So just something to consider. You can stain Dixie Mud. It's just going to stain differently than natural wood will. So my plan here is I want to, I'm just going to kind of brush on my yellows and my blues kind of randomly, but I'm going to keep my yellows more concentrated at the top and it's going to get darker as I get down to the bottom. And that way when it's peeking through my um, crackle, it'll have mostly yellows and it'll kind of fade down to the blues. That's my idea. I don't have to be neat about this, you guys. It's really kind of going to be kind of freeing because I'm going to cover all this anyways. I'm going to open all my colors so I can kind of alternate between them. It was a solid plan anyways. You know what, I'm going to turn this and we'll start on the side because I want to I want to be able to try to get some crackle on tonight and that means I need to hurry and get some paint on and let it dry a little bit. So I'm going to turn and start on a side so that I can try to get crackle on a side for you guys. I'm going to move this one out of the way. Uh, what am I moving? I'm going to screw this one over. It doesn't matter. Can you still see? Okay. So this is 
dusty blue and it kind of has formed a skin over the top this just protects your paint don't try to shake this back in and reintegrate it back into your paint it'll cause chunks so just throw that little skin away it's like you get skin on a pudding or skin on a milk or something like that um, just throw the skin away and then i'll shake this up i haven't used dusty blue in a while but i love it with uh stormy seas it's really oh man you're seas. gonna have a lot to go back to because like there's a lot of questions coming through but i can't thumb through fast enough okay what are they mostly about why am i wearing you're, this yeah they're no they're they're What's all different your but... hair <laughs> Do you have to let it sit over the crackle sit overnight to dry? Yes, you okay. do. So I will try to get some crackle on tonight, but it's not going to actually show you guys any crackle. I'll just now the you. color, sorry, I'm just going to blaze through. Uh, Donna, it looks like her question was answered. Thank you for that. Um, as far as the color that's on there, the gray, that's just boss. This is just boss. Now your yellows that you're putting on okay, are? Okay, so this is my lightest yellow is um, lemonade. And then I've got rebel yellow is slightly darker than that. And I'm going to let a little bit of my gray boss peek through. And I'm just going to kind of randomly brush these on it. This is kind of a cute look on its own. But I really want the crackle to be the star of my show. I'm using one brush and I'm dipping into both of these yellow colors. So far I'm just doing the yellows. I'm going to add some blues in this. But I'm going to leave the grays even peeking through. Because if my crackle cracks and shows some gray, that is... That is in keeping with my color scheme, too. Do you want me to shut this off for now until no. you're done? Does it bother you no. at all? Okay. Sorry, I have a fan going in the background, you guys. It's really warm here today. All right, so this is Rebel Yellow that I'm working with. Now I'm getting kind of to my midpoint. I'm going to using my same brush. I'm not worried about contamination because I don't worry about contamination ever. <laughs> Whether it be cross yeah, or... Yeah, trying to keep yeah. it try to keep things simple and I'm just going to start brushing in some of the gold. I'm using kind of a cross hatching just so my paint has a little bit of texture. Um, this is all going to show through in future layers so it may not really make sense here now but as I keep building this up it will start to come together. Oh Sheila yes the pool is open ready for business. Yeah the pool has to be open because you guys were in California and our lake I don't even think our lake is going to open this year. We have our a, pool water I checked today at 70 degrees, so have at it. We live about 10 minutes from the closest lake, and uh, there's not even enough water in it to launch a boat. So I think we're going to be <laughs> It's like a out. bathtub. Yeah. I, would say I mean, I shouldn't really, laugh. It's really sad. Yeah. It's, I mean, you can see the bottom of the lake bottom when you go there. So these are just pretty colors, like, on their own. This is a cute look on its own, honestly. Just this uh, kind of random cross-hatching. So I'm going to do this all over my the entire body of this piece. And then these will be my colors that peek through my crackle. And I just painted onto my leg. Uh, you don't have to do the, you know, the cross hatching. I just think it's kind of cute to let the colors kind of fade into each other. You know, honestly, you're barely going to see any of this in the end. You'll barely even know that this is there, but you, you know, you will see these colors peeking through under my crackle. All right, so that's the side. I want this to dry so that I can show you guys applying the actual crackle medium itself. And we'll go through what those steps are once I get there. Can you throw me those colors that you were using again? Okay, so I've got, I've got um, lemonade is my no. lightest. You know what, I don't want to put them up there just yeah. in case there's can paint on it. Turn, no. Yeah, lemonade, okay. rebel yellow, the Gulf, Dusty Blue, and Stormy Seas. Okay, my brush has gotten pretty messy. I'm going to go ahead and leave that original brush for my blues, and I'm going to come back and get a new one for my yellows. So same thing on the front. I'm going to try to not touch my um, newly stained top since I don't have it taped off. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to kind of... I'm going to do this on the entire body of both of these pieces. Now these drawers have this little lip that overlaps onto the body. So I want to make sure I get the drawer front, but I'm going to need to pull it out so that I don't create, see this little gap right here. Okay, so just make sure that you don't, if you have these drawers that overlap the front, 
you don't forget to pull them out and get a little bit of paint underneath there too. So I'm gonna end up, I think, with two brushes. I'll do one for my yellows and then I'll keep one isolated to the blues. And that way, if I do get contamination, it's not a huge color variation. I'm just doing the lemonade and, re and rebel, or lemonade and rebel yellow, and I'm just dipping into them at random. And then I'm doing vertical and horizontal brush strokes. No need to keep it smooth or even or any of that. Crackle has texture, you guys, so this is going to be a textured finish. I'm still leaving some of my gray peeking through. I think that will be cute with this color scheme to even show a little bit of the gray. So whenever I have to add a primer like Boss, I try to use it to my advantage, whether it's distressing and showing that extra layer of color um, or some way, make that a feature of your paint finish too. It doesn't just need to be a layer of, of primer that you then cover. That can be actually part of your finish now, too. And you don't always paint over your hardware. Um, I usually paint over my hinges. I'm a hinge painter. I really am. I'll tell you a couple of reasons why. Number one, if you take hinges off, you will never get those doors to hang the same way again. So if I decide that I want to wash them, I will, I will paint with them on. And then I will come back and take them off and clean them later because it's, it's uh, the paint comes off really easily. You just boil the hardware in um, white vinegar and water. And then um, the paint almost just melts off. So if I wanted that paint to come off, it would come off pretty easy. You can just paint it and then add a little bit of gilding wax over the top and leave your hardware painted. Um, these are really ugly hinges. They're kind of, they're really dated. So I painted over them and I'm going to leave them painted, but I tend to paint my hinges. I like it. It has served me well. I don't have a problem with it. I know a lot of people are like, <gasps> but you know, um, that's personal preference, I think. All right. So that's pretty good on my yellows. Let's come back with this other brush that I said I was going to dedicate to my blues. And same thing. This is the gold. This is just a nice little lighter or um, brighter tone of blue. I think that bright blue is going to be really cute, kind of peeking through the crackle. And it's going to tie in that paper that I plan to put on the inside of the doors. I mean, this is really free. No rhyme or reason. I'm just... I feel like you're playing the spoons. Yeah, it's super easy. Yeah. Oh, the sound that it makes on there. I'm not musical at all. That is a talent. I, I always envy people who could like read music and stuff. I never could. Sean so you, you, used what? to take uh, piano lessons for anyone who is interested. I what do you mean anybody that's interested? It's not like I was giving them. <laughs> in case you, in case you want to hire him for weddings or anything like that. But for, for no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> How did I guess? <laughs> All right, I'm going to come back with a little bit of yellow over the top of this just so it's a little bit. I don't want to. I feel like you're just trying to give me away. <laughs> Somebody, except anybody, for, any taker? Except for brush cleaning. If it's brush cleaning, I mean, I got brushes I need clean, like, and spraying. Okay, that's. Can you boil brushes in vinegar? Um, I don't think I would. I would not. These are uh, synthetic bristles, which is nylon and polyester. They will melt eventually. I don't know at what temperature, but I would not. These brushes are my absolute babies. They're synthetic bristles. I wouldn't try it. Even even the, or the natural bristle brushes, I wouldn't try it. Bristles are too expensive to even... Eventually, they're going to melt. Oh, man. If anyone wants to know if I can teach your eight-year-old the guitar. Oh, <laughs> can you teach our seven-year-old I can guitar, even teach yeah. myself the guitar. Yeah, uh, I don't think we're there, Brittany. I mean, you can. I'm more of a ukulele. I, I you mean, can. Like, you do, you know, do you want it to be good? Like Three and four string. <laughs> Those sixes, I get a little confused. All right, now I'm into my dusty blue, which is a little bit darker. This, is, this alone is kind of a beachy look. It's kind of pretty and... Um, but keep in mind, this is going to be covered in white. You're only going to see a tiny bit of these colors peeking through. It's just going to be enough to be kind of light and look like it's old painted, 
but it's not going to be, this is kind of a, you know, this is probably more of a bold look. And when I, once I put the white and the crackle over top, it's way going to tone this down and then it'll have some dark waxes on it and things like that. So keep in mind that you're, you want to, you want to plan out your color scheme when you're using crackle, that what you see underneath is not your main color. Your main color is actually your second color when you're using crackle. This is my Stormy Seas. Letting a little bit of that um, gray boss peek through. Just making sure I get some paint everywhere. I don't know where my cracks are going to happen. This is why you guys will notice I don't use crackle a whole lot because I don't have control with crackle and I need control. So you're kind of a control... Um, no. No, not what? at all. No, not That's at so all. That's so weird. Kind of. Oh, kind of. yeah. Um, I'm not the boss of Crackle. Crackle is the boss of me. All right, and I'm going to do, I will do inside these doors. I think I want under my, um, let's talk about inside the doors. I'm going to put a decoupage paper in here. This one here. I'm going to put a paper inside these frames. I put boss on because paper is porous. It can discolor with bleed through too. So I did put my boss on, but I want a white underneath this paper. It's it's semi-translucent paper, so I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put another paint color on here before I put my paper over the top. Okay, and that's just gonna go in the centers here. So if you're using paper and your piece is a bleeder, make sure that you put your boss on even underneath paper. It still needs to have that level of protection. All right, I'm just gonna get into this side of my door. Now I am trying, I don't want drips, I don't want globs. You know, that's probably more texture than I'm going for right now. Um, so I try to get it, you know, kind of even. Just keep that in mind if, you, if you're going super messy with it, you're gonna get more texture to your finish. All right, I'm gonna turn that and I have a little, my door open. Yeah, scoot it back a little and shut Oh, I see. I had to take the latches off to paint them, so right now they don't stay shut very well, except for kind of by friction. All right, they're just going to open. Got a little screw right here that I don't know why, so I'm just going to take it out and I will patch this hole before I do my next step. All right, same thing all the way around. And then after this side, we'll go back to our first side and that should be dry enough that I can put the actual crackle medium on it. It's not gonna crackle tonight because it does take time. It's a, it's one of the slower processes, probably up there with doing like patina paint where you just have to be patient and let the natural reaction happen with the product. But I'll at least show you how it goes on. And then we'll talk about how you uh, put paint over the crackle to make it actually crackle. So nothing new here. This is kind of a pretty look. I could see this, uh, you know, whether it's in these colors or even if you tone down the colors a little bit, this in itself is kind of a pretty look. So that's my two yellows, Rebel Yellow and Lemonade. This is the Gulf, just for that little bit of brighter teal that pulls in the paper that I'm going to put on the inside. Um, when I post this finished, I'll post it with the piece that it's going to go with, but it's yellow and blue. If you guys saw it and you follow my page, you guys would recognize it. I think I posted it, actually reposted it on the first day of spring this year, actually. It's the perfect spring piece. Yellows and blues are just very fresh and clean. All right, leaving some of my gray peeking through, just kind of flicking my brush. It's kind of freeing. Go with some of the dusty blue. And then my Stormy Seas is my darkest color. blend with these two. This would be a really pretty blend if you smoothed all these colors out. 
you can kind of imagine what these would look like blended. That's what the original piece is. It's actually a yellow to blue blend. Um, but I love when I'm doing multiple pieces for the same room when they don't match exactly. They're, you know, they kind of tie into each other, whether in color or in style, but they're not a match. All right, so I've gone around my whole body now. Let's go back to this first side. I'm gonna get the top of this door. And I'll deal with the inside later, but let's go back to our first side and we're going to try to brush on some crackle. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty dry. It's nice and warm here. Um, normally I like to allow 24 hours in between each step, but we're going to kind of, we're going to kind of blow through this night. So it's nice and dry. Um, Give me a sanding sponge. I'm just going to sand it a little bit just to knock down. There's a couple little spots here. Probably doesn't really matter because I'm going to crackle it anyway. But I usually sand in between my coat. Love that. That would be a really pretty blend. I'm kind of tempted to blend this now. All right, and let's go over to crackle. The product itself is clear. Throw some lids on these. With my fan going, I'm going to dry my paints out really fast. Should throw those brushes <laughs> into the water too. Sheila. <laughs> Low flying plane? Because of air. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we do live near, there's this neighborhood near us. It's pretty cool actually. All the houses, their garages are airplane hangers, and the street is a runway. It's an air. It's an airplane. I guess if you start to hear the guns, then it's a little bit of a problem, right? The turret <laughs> off the plane. I'll take the little Cessnas. All right, I'm going to touch up a little bit of this, my gel stain just on the side. But Dana's got a point. They haven't heard of Carl in a while. Oh, I, yeah. Huh? I, I think, you guys, if you were emotionally attached to Carl, uh, a period of grieving would be appropriate. I think that's where we are with it. We're pretty sure Carl's no more. We didn't have anything to do with that, by the way. Yeah, let's throw that yeah. in there. But we do get skunks We're and raccoons. We're not sad. We're on five acres. We get skunks and raccoons and all that. So I think, what are you I think Carl's not with us. I'm going to shake this. You want to turn the air down when you do this part? No, I'm good. It's going gonna, it's gonna... to... Okay. I know, but do you want me to turn the air down when you do this? No. Okay. You can put crackle over any color and you can put any color over top. Crackle also works with the silk line as well. So crackle is a clear medium. It's thick, you guys. This is nice and thick. It's like a gel. Um, when you brush this on, you wanna brush it on with a chip brush because you're gonna wanna throw this away. It's really thick. You don't wanna put crackle in your drains. It's really thick. Um, let's see, does it tell you that? No, it doesn't tell you not to put it in your drain. But I would not put this in my drain. It's just really thick and it dries quickly, kind of like a gel. That's just something to keep in mind when you're putting it down your drain. Dana's watching too much Dateline. <laughs> She's coming up with ways that, did I, did I, too much brush hog? Did I take her girl? So look how thick this is. It's very much a gel. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and fill my brush with this. And you can put crackle on a whole bunch of different ways. When you're brushing crackle on, if you put crackle on thick, you're going to get really fat, thick cracks, okay? If you put it on thin, you're going to get smaller, skinnier cracks. With the paint that I put over top is what's going to crack. I'm going to kind of drag this down so it kind of fades out a little bit, so I'll probably have thicker cracks up here at the top. You can brush crackle on different patterns. So if I were to take this and kind of cross hatch my crackle, that's going to create kind of circular cracks. Do you shake or stir that? Um, I would recommend stirring it. This I did already stir before I got on tonight. So I just shook it a little bit, but I would recommend um, stirring this, not shaking it. Okay, once I brush my crackle on, I'm going to leave my crackle to dry overnight for 24 hours. I do have some spots in here, though. I'm going to stir it again. I'm going to take a... Oh, here. Well, that's pretty 
pretty well mixed. All right. I just wanted to see what, make sure I got the bottom nice and picked up in there. So when I stir, I actually pick up from the bottom and move that into the top. You want to make sure that it's so thick, you guys, you want to make sure that it's really well mixed. It's also so thick that it can start to sag when you're working on kind of a vertical surface. So keep that in mind if you're putting it in on, on pretty thick. If you have thick because you want those thick cracks, uh, your product can start to sag. So just keep an eye on it. You can come back periodically and just check on your crackle as it's drying and make sure that it hasn't started to migrate down your surface when you're using it on a vertical surface like a dresser or a piece of furniture. I'm going to keep it thicker around the edges and I'm just brushing it on. I'm not going to really do the cross hatching. I just want my regular cracks. So uh, what the consistency of the crackle? Um, it's a gel. Okay. It's very much a gel. So look at this. When I pick, when I put my brush in and pick it up, you see how thick that is? It's thick. It's thicker than the clear coats. It does not brush on smooth and even. It's not supposed to though. It's supposed to give you texture. The crackle is going to be a textured finish. You're going to get, you're, you're deliberately crackling your paint. Okay, so anywhere that I've got, I've got thicker. So some spots, if I overbrush them and add a little bit more crackle, those are going to be spots that I get thicker cracks in. If I don't want them thick, I just smooth out that crackle. It's not going to do anything to the paint that I have on the surface right now. All right, the crackling is going to happen with the paint that I put over top of this. So from here, once I brush my crackle finish on, I'm going to put my paint over top. And that is going to be the layer that actually starts to crackle. This is going to affect how that paint that I put over top dries and it's going to crackle that layer that I put over top. I'm not going to be able to get that on tonight because this crackle will not dry in time. That's one hard thing about doing demos with crackle. It needs dry time. I don't recommend putting a heat gun on it. It will change how the crackle reacts. You can try to accelerate it, but it, then it it's kind of patina the same way. It's a natural reaction and you want to let it do its thing. Give it all the time it needs. If you try to accelerate it, you're going to decrease the, you know, the look of the product it still works it's just not the same so donna we'll get to you i apologize uh we'll get to you after we'll come in and make the comments on it or brandy will so i don't know if you guys can see it's just creating a it's a very textured clear that's going over the top i can see texture in this it's not smooth but it's not supposed to be number one i'm putting it on with a chip brush which is a natural bristle brush. It's going to leave texture. Number two, it's a really thick product. It's not like the clear coats, you guys. This is not going to brush on like a clear coat. It's like brushing on like clear Elmer's glue. That's what it feels like. It feels like you're brushing on glue. So I'm going to let this dry overnight. I will let my crackle dry overnight. You want to give it ample time to dry. And then I'm going to come back and paint a coat over the top of it. Let's talk about how you paint a coat over crackle. This is unfortunately something I can't show you at the same time with this wet crackle on here. When you paint over crackle, you want to go, I'm going to show you with this brush, but my paint, my drop cloth that I'm going to put over top, you want to go in one direction. And it tells you this on the container, but I feel like when you read it on the container, it's confusing whether you have to brush the crackle in one direction or the paint that goes over top goes in one direction. It's the paint that goes over top. Okay, I can brush the crackle any which way I want. When I put that paint over top, I want to start in one direction. Thank you, Dana. And, and I want to brush my paint in one direction. If I come back and I brush like this, and this is how, you're going to have to fight your natural instincts to over brush it. Because if I go down and then up again, I've just covered up my cracks. It's not going to crackle right. So you go one direction, try to not stop and refill your brush if you don't have to. We're talking about the paint that goes over top now. Okay, so you're going to start in one direction, brush all the way down in one long even stroke. Now if you need to refill your brush, you know, you get to about here and you start running out of paint, fill your brush, start again here, keep going down. Don't come back up again. That's when you're going to hide your crackle and you're not going to get cracks in your paint. 
When I'm putting the actual crackle itself on, which is the clear medium, I can brush it any way I want. But when I'm doing the coat of paint, I want to make sure that I'm brushing in one direction. Sean's favorite band, One Direction. Well, okay? it's part of it. Just think about that when you're uh, painting with crackle. What is Sean's favorite band? One Direction. Back in your boy band days? Oh, like last week. <laughs> All right, so I'm kind of, I'm doing a little bit of cross hatching. I just kind of want it random so that I get random crackling. I've got a really thick spot right here. I can see a lot of the gel right there. That's going to be really thick, fat cracks. Um, I've got some thick spots down here. Those are thick, fat cracks. Oh, my product is starting to drip a little bit. I don't bit. think you should be judging. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Trust me, I've got a coat. Some Let's COVID. not offend the cracks. I got okay? my, my COVID-20 myself. You can brush on as little or as much as you want. And then I'm going to let this clear medium dry and I'm going to come back tomorrow and I can put on my, my coat of paint over top, which is going to be drop cloth. And I'm going to make sure that I brush in one direction all the way from top to bottom. It can be harder if you've got like really long pieces, but just keep in mind this is a textured look. It's supposed to be imperfect. Um, so allow yourself some freedom with that. You don't have a lot of control with it. so. You know, that's part of why I have a hard time with crackle is because I've got to let the crackle do its thing. It's like patina paint. If you don't like it, guys, guess what? You just come back and do it over again. Um, so there's not a lot at risk if you don't really care for how it crackles. I'm just looking for spots that maybe are a little bit light. So after it dries, do you, can you pick a similar color as what's underneath? Yeah, you can, you can. If you want to just cause texture, because then if you, you know, I could put my same colors over top. Um, and then you could come back and put waxes in it and really darken those crevices if you wanted to. You can put whatever you want over top of it. What if you wanted to spray your paint over it? Yeah, you could spray your paint over it too. Doesn't really matter. Um, you know, spraying it would alleviate any problems that you might have. If you can't resist that urge to brush and brush, you can spray and then you've taken away any urge that you might have. It's still gonna crackle the paint. It's just when you brush back over it, then you've brushed away your cracks. Okay, so just make sure you watch when I'm, when I'm going to let this dry tonight. It has my crackle medium. It feels sticky. It gets kind of tacky. It feels crusty a little bit. It's not a clear coat, you guys. It's like a, it feels like a glue. So it's tacky. It's crusty and sticky. Yeah, like your socks. I was going to say, do we just call it Sean? All right, so I'm gonna let this crackle medium dry overnight. I can come back tomorrow and put my paint over the top of it. And then I will leave that and I will just let it do its crackling thing. Could you put this over silk and then come back and apply silk over? Yeah, you can. It does work, it does crackle the silk. It will crackle with silk too. It might crackle differently than it would with the chalk mineral paint, but it does work. All right. I like this. I've got some texture in it. I think it's going to be really pretty when I let this come back and crackle. All right. So that's kind of the process with crackling. You can brush on the medium any way you want. Just be really careful. And, and all that happens if you brush and then back brush again, you just end up with a smooth coat over the top of your crackle medium and it's not going to crackle. You're going to be really disappointed. So just make sure when you brush, you just go brush, brush, brush. Refill your brush if you need to. You can dampen your brush um, to get your paint to elongate and stretch all the way down your piece if you need to. Just... Dana says her experience with crackle goes all the way to the 60s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crackle goes way back. I mean, I even have a little bit on my on my fingers. It feels like glue. It's like glue. Oh, you need some Sticky. lotion. Yeah, it's disgusting. All right, you guys, I'm going to pop off. I think these are going to be really cute, though. Stick with me. This is the ugly phase. They always have an ugly phase, right? It's like Brandy in middle school. Like It's like Brandy when me and Sean first started. Oh, here we go. All right, hey, let's wrap this up. All right, you guys, I'm going to pop off. You guys, thanks for hanging out with me with a Thursday. On another Thursday, um, I will get these together. You guys will see pictures of these when I'm done. Um, <laughs> but you can find all the products that I used tonight at the link that I put above in the post. That's the five colors we used, which was Lemonade, Rebel Yellow, The Gulf, Dusty Blue, 
and Stormy Seas is our colors. And then we use the Crackle Medium. And then we used a no paint gel stain in walnut for the top. You can also use that link to find a local retailer in your area if you want to go in and check out any of the products in person. Um, I will be back here with you guys next Thursday. I have a video premiering on my YouTube channel tomorrow that's going to be a really pretty look with silk and some waxes. So if you guys don't follow me on YouTube, go check out my YouTube channel. Click that subscribe button. I put out a new video every week for you guys. Um, otherwise, I will see you guys next Thursday. Have a good weekend.